Joining us now to dig deeper into this trend is Aaron Keating, executive analyst at Cox Automotive. Aaron, Tesla cut prices several quarters ago, and you see all these pictures of lots full of undriven, unused Teslas. It, which is the chicken and which is the egg here? Uh, the fact that people can get used cars for less, so they're not buying new cars, so they're filling up lots, so they're cheaper, so, so, so. And, and how do you think it ends? You know, I think it's a mixed story, actually. We, we have to remember that just in 2021, we had less than uh, half a million EVs sold in the first place. So we do have more used EVs now entering into the market. And of course, back then it was Chevy and Tesla that were both sort of dominating the market. And so we're seeing mostly Teslas because that's what's available in the supply for used EVs. Um, so I think that, you know, it's becoming a more affordable option for consumers. There's up to $4,000 that they can get in a tax credit right now. And that's also helping them pull down the initial outlay of costs that they have on a used EV. So it's it's a mixed story. It's a mixed bag. But we do definitely see that the cost parity is really driving a lot more sales of the used, used car. And how does the lease market fall into this? I think I saw uh, something about a lease deal on Hyundai's Ionic 6, where you could get it for less than 300 bucks a month and less sure. than 3,000 down. Like, I, I don't even know why I'd buy a used EV if I could lease, uh, if I could lease one for that price. So, I mean, it's a, it's, that's also a, a tale of two stories, right? It's one, it's helpful because it's good for consumers. It's driving down the price of the used EVs because it, to your point, if you can compete in a new lease vehicle. The other good news about that, though, is that now we know that we will have a better supply of used EVs coming into the market two or three years as well. So it works both ways. It's good that the consumers have good affordable options from a leasing perspective, which then, of course, puts some downward pressure on the used price. But it also allows us to see in the future that we will have a steady supply starting to come into the market of used EVs, uh, making that transition just a little bit easier. I wonder if they're about to inflect lower because I like this comparison. You know, the currently a, a used a traditional car, $32,000, a used EV, 34000 and EVs might keep dropping in price because one of the interesting data points I saw lately, Aaron, was that a lot of people who have bought one have buyer's remorse. Sure. OK, some people are thinking the infrastructure hasn't caught up with us yet. Charging is a little bit more difficult than it was before. Anxiety range, things like this. But, you know, this transition is going to take us some time. The industry needs time for consumers to catch up with the supply. They need to be understanding where the infrastructure is. They need to be knowing that they can go down the street and charge or that they can charge at home and have a good amount of range. And, you know, we were seeing at Mannheim a lot of used vehicles that are coming in and they're going through our for, you know, industry first, VIN specific battery health score. And the great news is we're not seeing a ton of degradation on those batteries. So it's a really good news for the consumers to know that, hey, you can trust the batteries that are coming in these cars. For the most part, they're holding up really, really well. Warranties are still really good. You can be assured that OEMs are going to take care of you. So while there might be some buyer's remorse of individuals who have had EVs before, I think that as things continue to pick up, the awareness and so forth, we're going to continue to increase adoption. And what about, Aaron, the, the math for the buyer on buy versus lease it, it, versus, you know, buy new or buy used. It seems like it might be different for EVs because, you know, the conventional wisdom had been, hey, you buy a car, you keep it for like 10 years, and then it's sure. a better value than leasing. But the technology is such a key part of an EV. Sure. Is it different? Are you just going to get less on trade-in or resale value in the future because the technology will have advanced and the demand won't be high for that vehicle you've got? Sure, and that's something to consider because when we think about getting a used, call it a BMW or a Mercedes or a Honda, we're thinking three years generation, you know, changes doesn't really change dramatically the car that you're buying. And in an EV, there is this pent up fear of, hey, if I'm buying a car that's three years old, am I missing out on the newest battery technology and so on and so forth? A lot of the cost savings and developments that are happening in EVs is honestly more about mass, shape, size, giga casting, of course, you hear from Tesla. So making the cars more aerodynamic so that they can go longer range and so forth. But I don't think that the technology is going to change so much that you won't have people comfortable with the first and second generation of the EVs that are coming out now. All right. Well, either way, you're taking a different kind of gamble, I guess, you on uh, whether yeah. you buy yeah. used or new or lease. Aaron Keating, right. thank you. Sure.